What's good kings and queens? I hope everyone's week is going well. In this new arc of this anime, the career of Adrian Broner. This is what they want. They want AB. They want AB to go out. They don't want me to be in nice cars. They don't want me to be in Rolexes. They don't want me to be in APs. They don't want me to be in private jets. They want me to lose this fight, go up under the rug, and never be talked about again. They don't want me to see the top of my pinnacle. But guess what, man? I train my ass off. I'm not losing to no Jesse Vargas, man. Y'all got me f***ed up. He's going on more than likely one last run for title contention. Let's take this time in this video to celebrate the entertaining career of AB with his best opponents. With that being said, let's start the video. Alright, thanks Adrian very much for being with us and we look forward to seeing you next okay. month. Yes sir, you, uh, Or actually later this month I should say. Bring sunglasses, I'm gonna shine, I'm gonna I'm dance my way in and dance my way out, you know how I do. Alright, uh. good self-promotion. This matchup was Broner's coming out party. Outside of the De Leon fight, Broner was relatively unknown. Fighting here and there on ESPN, HBO's untelevised cards, which was available to see on the international broadcast. So overseas fight fans had a glimpse of Broner before the majority of us had at the time. Those who were able to watch Broner's early fights will recognize that Broner did not at all fight like Mayweather. He would switch it up and experiment with what worked and what didn't work. Trial and error. By the time the Litzel fight came, this is where we'll see the Broner we're all accustomed to. Freddie Roach and promoted by Golden Boy, who is the promoter here tonight. Vera is the local Texan who's a rugged tough guy. Wouldn't the small ring actually favor Vera, not the promoters. So his opponent Jason Litzow. Jason was coming into the 2011 as a bit of a player in the division after being massively written off in his fight against former unified champion Celestino Caballero. This was a huge upset, literally one of the biggest upsets of the decade. Celestino seemed unbeatable in his super featherweight debut against undefeated Dal Jordan. So in the fight against Jason, Celestino came in as a 12 to 1 favorite. Litzow ruined Celestino's title contention, defeating him by split decision. Ring Magazine titled this Upset of the Year of 2010. Due to this performance, Jason was ranked at number 9. Broner came in unranked by the publication. Despite this fight lasting barely a round, Broner showed great poise and control in the ring, and once he found his opening and landed the first real clean shot which froze Jason on the ropes, Broner hastily put him away before the bell rung. This was Broner's first title defense of the WBC lightweight title against number 6 ranked Gavin Rees. Despite being number 6 overall, he was ranked number 1 by the WBC, 2 by the WBA, and number 5 by the WBO. Both guys came in on fight day rather heavy at 150 pounds. Rees started the first round quite fast, pressing the fight with the jab and landing what he could, which was enough for him to win the first round based off of effective aggression and punch output, despite Broner low output but high accuracy. Good left hook by Broner. Another right hand land. Broner would open up a lot more in the second to even things up and surprisingly the 14 and 1 underdog is making it competitive for the time being. And this is a cocky little Welsh. One of the remake puncher. But you heard the caution of Gary Lockett between rounds. And he said that he's going to run this big problem with that three right hand. And now Broner's starting to land some clean shots. That straight right here is starting to close the eye a little bit, but you may want to start trying to keep that off of him. Reese was really feeling himself coming into the third round. A bit too much. Dropping his hands, showboating, trying to make Broner miss. Now, it's not dumb if it doesn't work, which it was working, but you gotta make it out the round first, or win the fight. Broner made him pay in the second half, upping up his punch count and landing beautiful counters to hurt him, then to one up him, doing some showboating of his own while Reese holds on. The very next round, Broner would drop him with a perfect uppercut. After that, it was pretty much downhill for Reese. He would have some moments landing a sneaky shot here and there, then to showboat, really soaking up this moment before being dropped and finished off by Broner that very same round.
Don't let the record fool you, Granados' record, especially at that time, was incredibly misleading. All his losses and draws, he had gotten the short end of the stick, which is pretty wild because he's coming into the fight with four losses and two draws. After his fourth loss, he went on a five win streak. One of those wins was a massive upset victory against rising prospect Amir Amin. Incredibly tough, entertaining fight that really came down to the wire for Broner in the later rounds. A lot of toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Broner's pattern in this fight seemed to try and box in the early portion of the round, and depending on how that went, if he's up in the round, which due to the extreme pace of this fight, it was even or he's down in the round. He would pick it up dramatically, letting his hands go, pushing Granados back to where Broner is literally chasing after him. Last two rounds were one to remember. It's wild that it was only a 10 round fight. Broner would come out victorious by a narrow split decision. Getting caught for every... Asserting his class edge. And the post fight, it was quite entertaining by Broner. Then to end it off with a wholesome closing statement. It, it's nothing personal, but he talking about go back to Chicago. I ain't going back to Chicago. I seen D Rose leave. It's over. <laughs> what do you want to do next now? I want to give an apology to not only my fans, but the parents out there that got the kids looking up to me, to all the foolish things I've done in the past. You know, I can promise you that going on from here, I'll be a better role model, a better father figure, and, and a better star for y'all. After his loss against Sean Porter, which is possibly Broner's worst performance, he really came into this fight highly motivated. This performance showed you a glimpse of what a 100% focus Broner can do with what he has. He did a little bit of everything this fight. He boxed, he brought the whole fight down to his pace, and most certainly he was consistently putting up a great punch count against a gamed opponent who was quite active and was not letting Broner off the hook. Broner really making a statement pressing the fight when he really didn't have to, to finally crack through and stop Khabib in the 12th round with only 40 seconds to spare. My opinion, in the post Maidana arc of Broner's career, this will be his best performance. Vargas was a replacement for Omar Figueroa Jr. for a title elimination bout for the WBC title. Now, fortunately, I don't think the Vargas fight was a title elimination fight. Can I say that in Spanish? Uh, soy Adrian. Uh, ¿Cómo te llamas? Jesse Vargas. Uh, punto. Sí. The pressure for this was highway comedy. Broner may be the only fighter I know to do that to LRB. And I know all y'all against me. Him right here, Leonard LRB against me. Leonard a bitch ass too. You don't disrespect me like that. Man, shut up. You ain't with me. I'm you with, with Jesse. I'm with Mayweather Promotions. You with, oh yeah. This I'm a real one. I'm and, a real and one. And this isn't about me. You guys got to fight. Yeah, all Saturday right. Night. Shut that soft ass and shit best, up. And the best man Shut that soft, that's some soft ass shit. Shut that soft ass shit up. Just like the Granados fight, due to Broner's pacing in the rounds and punch output where he'll pick up in the later second half of the round, it really came down to the wire. Very exciting fight. Definitely got your money's worth from both sides of the field and the pre-fight and the fight itself. This fight resulting in a majority decision draw. An uppercut by Broner. A big right hand. Vargas looks like he's staggered. Broner letting his hands go. Oh my goodness. Broner. Hands down, Broner's best performance against a young, hungry champion. <laughs> like you just had one. <laughs> Though Broner is three years younger, but in the grand scheme of things, DeMarco was young as well at the peak of his game. After getting swept pretty bad against the late Edwin Valero, DeMarco went on a hell of a win streak, winning five fights in a row, last three fights being the most meaningful. A huge come from the behind win against Venezuelan great Jorge Linares, fifth round TKO against Miguel Roman, and a first round knockout of John Molina Jr. This fight was his third defense of the WBC lightweight title. This was 
scheduled shortly after the passing of the great Emmanuel Stewart, and Broner had patched in a photo on his robe to honor the great, dedicating a piece of his performance to him. Since DeMarco fights at a similar pace to Broner, this was an absolute nightmare for DeMarco. Broner throwing what he wanted and landed what he wanted to land. DeMarco coming in with a left hand. He's not giving much hand. You know you're going to get countered. That's exactly two punches in a row yet. Well, they're still in that situation where each guy can bleed it. Our right hand by Broner. The fourth round being the best display of defense and offense, all while remaining in the pocket walking down DeMarco. Being first, landing at will to catch him with brilliant counters. Amateur fighters rather than professionals. DeMarco can't win the inside fight, though. Good sharp right hand inside by Broner, and another. DeMarco with a right to the body. Broner lands an uppercut and another. DeMarco fires back with a right to left. DeMarco tries to open up and pops off wild combinations, and they were brilliantly parried away and avoided. Devastating DeMarco with uppercuts. Yeah, because his hands are so much more quicker than DeMarco. DeMarco can't win that fight right there. DeMarco lands a straight left and a right hook. Broner nails him with a right hand. It was pretty much downhill for DeMarco, and Broner was picking off DeMarco at any given second. And in the eighth round, Broner made his move, dropping DeMarco for the first time in his career. His corner would proceed to throw in the towel right at the count. Broner just taking DeMarco apart at the moment. Combination punches on the inside are killing DeMarco. Whereas just when he got close to him, he realized that his hands are too quick. Don't stay away from him. Get close to him and get at him. Run her out by taking punches. Down goes DeMarco on a swinging left. This fight being for the vacant WBA Junior Welterweight title, quite a bit of folks slept on Ashley Theophane coming into this fight. He had a rocky start to his career, close decision losses, one being against Danny Garcia, which you can make a case for Ashley winning that fight. Broner would crack Ashley in the third round, then once again later in that same round, making an attempt to get him out of there. Now keep in mind, Broner did not make weight for this fight, and Ashley is more than likely banking on Broner tiring out, as he is really pushing putting the pressure on him since the second. Ashley would survive the round and the pacing in the fifth will go for a change as Broner switches back to boxing and Ashley is now their aggressor. As Broner's punch count would take a hit, Ashley's was going up where he would rake in two rounds in a row, the sixth round being the biggest and to end it off landing a huge shot on Broner. <laughs> Seven and eight could really go either way. Both guys showing some serious fatigue. Broner would find a second wind at the beginning of the knife, and he didn't take any chances in not utilizing that to put away Theophane, cracking him 30 seconds into the round, flurrying on Theophane on the ropes, then to finally crack through 10 seconds later, getting in a barrage of shots where Ashley backpedaled in an odd way while looking at the ref. The ref may had misread Ashley's signals, and he stopped the fight right there. Since the title was left vacant since Broner did not make weight, Ricky Burns will win the title and he would go on to fight Julius Ndongo in a unification. Then Ndongo will go on to face Terrence Crawford for the undisputed junior welterweight title. Now it makes you think, if Broner did make weight, won the title, unified against Ndongo, or the other way around with Crawford unifying against Ndongo, would we have seen Broner versus Crawford for the undisputed title? Who would win? Leave it in the comments. This was a good fight in the year 2014. This will be my opener to the top five best fights of that year. Obviously, fights like Salido versus Zheng Dang, Takayama versus Rodriguez Jr., and Crawford versus Gamboa will be at the top, but, but this was a matchup not many was expecting to turn up like this, and Broner really delivered, digging deep when it mattered most late in the fight, dropping Taylor in the 12th round. 115-112 was the first official judge's score, and I believe that was the right score. I felt like Broner needed to win that round big. He certainly felt like that himself and he made it happen.
Now I made a 30 minute video of the entire tale of this fight, go check that out. With that being said, most who remembered this fight only remember what Maidana did. The two knockdowns, the hump, and Broner being juggled to one side of the ring to another, and his walk back to the locker room. All while completely ignoring the work Broner put in to tighten up the scorecards. Broner was having the most success when he would mix it up with the style you see now and his original style, on top of upping up his round by round punch count. Broner would later revert back and Maidana would pick right back up, outpointing Broner rounds 8, 9, and 10. The 12th round, Broner would let off one big rally to try and put Maidana down. Broner catches Maidana with a perfect combination which buckled him, causing him to backpedal, which led to an all-out toe-to-toe battle between the two all the way to the end of the round. Broner would not get the decision, but he would put up a spirited effort that should be credited. In the year 2022, Broner is more than likely going on one last run for title contention. Do you think he can make one last hurrah? And on top of that, that is Adrian Broner's best opponents. For more videos like these, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for Patreon-backed projects and early access. I'm Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.